Okay, let's learn about Uranus and Neptune a little bit in detail. Uh, so uh, we talked about the Juan planets and Uranus and Neptune are the other two uh, Jupiter-like planets, right? So we learn about Jupiter uh, and Saturn. So let, let's look at Uranus. So Uranus is four times the size of Earth and the Neptune also four times the Earth. So uh, here, please don't get confused about these sizes. So these sizes were compared with the diameter. So uh, if you think about Saturn, um, we should be able to align 10 Earths along the diameter. So I'm not talking about the volume size, I'm talking about the uh, diameter. So you can fit 10 Earth along the uh, diameter of Saturn. Right? So basically, uh, the diameter of Saturn is 10 times the uh, diameter of Earth. So like here, four times the size of Earth, uh, both Uranus and Neptune, four times the size of Earth. So that means you can fit uh, four Earth along the diameter. Okay? Then uh, rotate, rate, uh, rotational periods. Uh, so we know the Jupiter and Saturn are spending about the same time um for the rotational period and then uh, uranus uh, spends about 17 hours and 12 minutes uh, neptune spends 16 hours 6 minutes so there's no big variation here except one hour or so um it's it's quite close okay do you like to be rich then we need to plan a trip to Uranus and Neptune. It's literally raining diamonds. Uh, those diamonds are not the one that you are imagining, like polished and shiny and all, but these are carbon-based materials, right? So the diamond composite uh, materials are raining on Uranus and Neptune. They're not shiny, but you can, if you pick those, you can bring it up and polish it and make it nice big diamonds. All right, so the Uranus and Neptune are nearly identical in their internal structure uh, as well as the size, right? So Uranus and Neptune are planetary twins like Earth and Venus. Uh, Uranus is 3% larger in radius, but 15% smaller in mass than Neptune. So these 3% uh, is not a big deal. It's quite similar, right? Uh, then the interior of Uranus and Neptune, uh, as you see here, it's kind of the same again. Um, so there's a gaseous atmosphere like uh, Jupiter and Saturn. So they have hydrogen and helium um, a lot, but there's a little bit of methane as well. So it, these planets get this blue bluish color uh, because of that presence of methane. Uh, then the liquid outer layer it's made out of hydrogen and helium uh, as see as you see in this picture so this outer layer is liquid hydrogen and helium then uh, the mantle is water and ammonia so this one is water and ammonia it's liquid ices and then in the middle we have this rocky core it is solid uh, and it's rock and metal so if you want to land on Uranus and Neptune, I don't think you can land over here, it's gassy. Then comes a liquid piece and then the metal, uh, I mean the solid core. Uh, the surface, Uranus is small as gas, giant planets go. Uh, you know, with the gassy planets, they are big than the uh, terrestrial planets. However, there's a uh, the limit for that size. So Uranus is the, uh, is the size of a gas planet that it can go. Uh, so it's about four times the size of Earth. And it's located 19.2 uh, located astronomical units away from the sun. So it receives little heat from the sun and has a surface temperature of 350 degrees below zero. It's negative 350 Fahrenheit. Uh, the nitrogen that makes up most of the Earth atmosphere would freeze solid at this temperature. So if, we, if Earth goes to this surface temperature, the presence of nitrogen will uh, freeze. So, you know, like in our atmosphere, in Earth atmosphere, 78% um, is nitrogen. Um, so if we go to this temperature, we will be freezing. 
Okay, so it's made of much the same material as Jupiter and Saturn, uh, mostly hydrogen and helium with some methane. So this methane provides the blue color of this planet by filtering red light out, out of the light reflected from layer of clouds near the top of its atmosphere. Okay, so you know like how we get the blue color and red color or the other, other color, col colors in the sky by scattering, right? So likewise, because of this presence of methane, the blue color can survive. So that's why we can see the, the planet in blue color. Uh, orbital and rotational period. So Uranus, Uranus rotates on its axis once every 17.24 hours. So the length of a day on Uranus is 17 and 20.24 hours. Um, and most interestingly, the rotational axis lies almost in the plane of the ecliptic. Uh, you know what is ecliptic is, right? Can't you? So the ecliptic is the path that the sun is moving along the year. Um, so this planet's rotational axis lies almost in the plane of ecliptic with the um, Uranus North Pole uh, dipped a little bit. So we'll, uh, I think I have a better picture than this later. So I'll go over that one about the rotational axis on that slide. Uh, anyway, so just to give you an idea, the rotation axis of Uranus is tilted by 97.86 degrees. Remember, Earth is 23 and a half, right? So the Uranus is tilted 97.86 degrees. So this is the axis of uh, rotation axis of Uranus. So you know, you see like it's tilted like uh, all the way down passing 90 degrees. Uh, the Uranus is actually rotating backwards relative to most of the other planets. Uh, even though I said backward, I would say it is in the different plane, right? So if you look at these pictures, uh, you should be able to understand it. Uh, so the, let's say Earth is rotating this way. Then the Saturn is rotating opposite to the rotation of Earth. Uranus is moving really in the uh, to the other plane, like it's coming from this. Um, if you if you look at this slide, it's coming uh, towards you, right? So it's rotating towards you. These ones are in the in the plane of this uh, slide, so it's rotating counterclockwise and clockwise. But the Uranus is coming towards you, so it's coming out of the screen, right? So this is the Uranus uh, rotation is kind of totally uh, opposite to that of Earth and Saturn. So because of that high tilt, we, the Ur seasons of Uranus are really long. And um, so for example, winter solstice is, um, okay, let's say this way. So vernal equinox, the sun rises every 17 hours and so forth. So I, I have a, uh, explanation on uh, the slide. So let's look at on that one um, when we come to that slide. All right, so the orbit and rotational periods, so the, the, the weird axial tilt makes more extreme seasons, uh, particularly when one of the poles is pointing toward the sun and the other is in pointing away. So the, um, also Uranus is moving in a, uh, in a very elliptical path. So the perihelion is 18.29 astronomical units and aphelion is 20.096 astronomical units. So it takes uh, 84.02 years to go once around the sun. So the length of a year on uh, Uranus is 84.02 Earth years. All right, so here's uh, the slide about the uh, seasons on Uranus. So as you see here, um, here in the center, we see the sun and you know the, uh, the axial tilt of Uranus is 97.9 degrees. So it's tilted like all the way down, like, like in this picture. So uh, if you think about the uh, winter solstice, so this is the North Pole. So North Pole is all the way uh, opposite to the sun. So it is not receiving sunlight at all. So uh, winter solstice stay there for 21 years of nighttime to the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so the Northern Pole of Uranus is having winter solstice, which is 21 years long. Then um, vernal equinox. So, you know, like uh, uh, this, uh, 
Uranus is rotating in this direction, like it's coming out of the page for us. So in this point, the <clears throat> Uranus receiving 21 years of more normal days and nights, right? So it's normal days for Uranus because it's rotating like towards sun, like this way, right? So everywhere on the planet is receiving normal days, uh, having day and nights for 21 years. Then the summer solstice. Uh, so that's the opposite of the uh, winter solstice. So North Pole is receiving the summertime uh, for 21 years long. And then uh, autumn equinox, again, 21 years of normal days and nights. All right, so the another factor that we like to learn about planets is magnetic field. Uh, so Uranus has a reasonable magnetic field about as intensity as Earth field on average. You remember like Uranus and, uh, sorry, the Saturn and Jupiter are really big and their magnetic field is huge as well compared to the Earth. Uh, but Uranus has a about the same size uh, magnetic field around it. Um, and it keeping with its odd sideways rotation axis has the magnetic north and south pole tilted 60 degrees to the rotational axis. So, uh, what's that mean? So let's say this is the rotational uh, axis. So that's the spinning axis or the rotational axis. And here, this is the uh, magnetic axis. So they are not aligning on top of each other. That's about a 60 degree difference here. Okay. In the picture, it says 59 degrees. You know, in, a, in, a, in this level of astronomy, we don't care about just a difference of one degree. So let's round it up to 60 degrees. So this rotational axis and the magnetic axis is 60 degrees away from each other. Uh, and then uh, if you remember the Earth, Earth rotational axis and the magnetic field axis are crosses at the center of Earth. But here on Uranus, it's not the same. It's the rotational axis and the um, magnetic axis are not cross each other at the center. There's a little offset offset. So we call this as the dipole offset. Uh, so again, on Earth, equator, then the uh, magnetic field line, uh, magnetic axis, and then the rotational axis crosses at the, at, the, uh, at the center of Earth. But here on Uranus, it's not. There's a dipole offset uh, over here about, like, like in this picture. So the origin of the magnetic field remains a bit of a mystery because this planet is not large enough to have a liquid metallic hydrogen. Uh, okay, so remember like Jupiter and Saturn had liquid iron, right? So, hold on. So the, if you remember about the magnetic field, uh, about planets. So the planets getting their magnetic field because of the presence of liquid metallic iron in there, right? So liquid metallic hydrogen can make the uh, magnetic field. So the for Uranus, it's a little bit mystery, like how does this planet getting the uh, magnetic field there? Because the planet is not large enough to have a liquid metallic hydrogen core like Jupiter and Saturn. So you remember like Jupiter and Saturn are large and they have liquid metallic hydrogen, but Uranus is not that large, right? It's only four times the diameter of a diameter. So there's certainly no liquid iron in the, in, in the Uranus as we know. So it is a little bit mysterious, like how did this, does this planet get magnetic field? So it has been proposed that the interior is basically made of ammonia and water ices, but the structure is not settled. So that's all we know. So it's still, it's keep the magnetic, present of magnetic field of Uranus keep a mystery. Uh, and moon and rings. So Uranus has 27 moons that are known so far with the five major ones. So Miranda, Ariel, Umbra, Titania, and Auburn. So those are the known um, five major ones, but there are 27 moons for, for Uranus as we know. So these are relatively small moons. Titania, the largest one, is only half the size of uh, our moon. Uh, in most pictures, you don't see a ring for Uranus, but it does have ring system. Uh, it consists of dark rocks. So the rings can be seen along with some surface clouds in those Hubble Space Telescope pictures. 
So you see like these are the rings around the uh, Uranus. And here this is cloud uh, uh, showing the, uh, you, the rings as well. All right, so the space probes had, do we have any space probe that visited Uranus? Yes, they have been visited by only once uh, by space probe Voyager 2, uh, which arrived at Uranus after the gravitational slingshot uh, from Jupiter and Saturn. So the closest approach to Ura Uranus was 81,500 kilometers from the planet on January 24, 1986. Then Voyager 2 discovered 10 additional moons of Uranus, explored its ring system, uh, which had previously been detected from Earth, and found that the moon Miranda is extremely odd. Okay, so please answer the question on Top Hat, and then let's learn about uh, Neptune a little bit. 